on Japan's new Prime Minister, my colleague Rochelle Akufo, spoke with Hiroki Takeuchi earlier. He's the director of the Sun and Star program on Japan and East Asia for the Southern Methodist University, and he began by talking about how Fumio Kishida became the Prime Minister. I think that Suda, Prime Minister Suda uh, was uh, seeking uh, his uh, re-election, but uh, his uh, popularity went down. So his approval rate went down like, below 30% for the first time uh, in years. Uh, and then so uh, when uh, his predecessor, uh, Prime Minister Abe, was a, a Prime Minister, it was never uh, below 30%. So uh, that made the uh, uh, LDP politicians really worry about their election for the uh, lower house election uh, that is coming um, uh, this month, actually. So, uh, so the uh, politicians, LDP politicians, thought that uh, uh, they could not um, uh, win the election, uh, coming a lower house election with uh, Prime Minister Suga as uh, president of uh, LDP. So uh, that's why. Uh, many politicians start saying that, you know, uh, please, like, resign <laughs> um, to uh, uh, Prime Minister Suda. So, so basically, if it was uh, really to improve the chances for the general elections that are coming up at the end of October, then what does this mean, then, for Fumio Kishida's leadership and any agenda that he wanted to try and get through? So uh, the first thing that the Prime Minister uh, Kishida has to do is uh, um, he has to uh, regain the popularity of LDP and to make sure that... Uh, um, uh, he will make uh, LDP win the election. And uh, I'm actually, if I were LDP uh, leader, uh, I would be uh, optimistic uh, because the uh, opposition party is quite uh, weak. And that's also what uh, Prime Minister Suga thought. Um, and then, so uh, he thought like uh, he would, uh, there would be no chance for LDP to lose, but uh, his popularity really went down. So then let's compare their governing styles and priorities, Kishida and Suga. How would you describe that relationship and, and how are they similar or different? Well, overall, I think that just Suga and Kishida would not be so different. Uh, they are very uh, similar in a sense. They are not, uh, neither is so charismatic, but uh, uh, both are very uh, diligent uh, politicians. Uh, one difference maybe, um, and then what uh, Chida tries to uh, make uh, is uh, he tries to, to appeal that and he is more um, uh, serious about explaining uh, to the people. So uh, kind of lack of accountability was uh, what uh, Suga and also his predecessor Abe uh, were uh, criticized. Uh, so. Um, uh, Kishida tries to explain everything uh, more meticulously. Uh, and then also Kishida is, uh, she has been ready uh, for being the prime minister for a long time. He tried to uh, run for, he ran for a prime minister, um, I'm sorry, LDP uh, presidential election uh, and before this, uh, this time. And then uh, he has uh, uh, shown his interest. Uh, in being the prime minister for a long time uh, while uh, he was serving for um, ministry of, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. So I think that Shida is ready and then he, uh, he doesn't change the style. Um, he doesn't look charismatic. Uh, maybe like uh, he's, uh, he is boring, but at the same time, actually good leaders uh, can be boring. Uh, like uh, Chancellor Merkel of Germany uh, was has been considered as a kind of boring person, but she has been considered as a good leader. Now, I want to talk about something that's obviously front and center for, for every country right now, which is COVID-19 and the COVID-19 response. What do we know about Kishida's COVID uh, response plan, both in terms of the mitigation of economic fallout, as well as the, the actual virus itself? Yeah, so uh, the, the COVID measures uh, uh, are like... Uh, it doesn't depend on uh, who the prime minister is. So uh, for uh, mitigation measures, um, one is uh, um, uh, increasing the testing um, and uh, also uh, make sure that there are enough beds uh, secured um, just in case uh, cases uh, increase. Uh, and the second thing is uh, uh, more spread of vaccination. So fortunately, currently, uh, Japan uh, vaccination was spread um, even higher uh, rate uh, than the United States. It's about the same, the same rate. So it's actually pretty good. But in the long term, uh, one thing is uh, that uh, Kishida administration really has to work on is uh, uh, the restructuring of um, health uh, ministries. 
So um, I think that in the long term, Shida's task is uh, really uh, building a, a Japanese version of CDC uh, and uh, establishing the um, ministry uh, that is uh, independent uh, of the uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Health and Labor. And that's actually the key. Just very quickly, because I do want to get to the, the business community. What are their oh, yeah. expectations for what's going to be happening now? Yeah, so uh, I think that in the short term, the uh, business community is waiting for, um, you know, uh, lifting the restrictions of human mobility. That is actually in the short term, like uh, uh, the business um, people, business leaders uh, expect. In the long term, uh, business leaders expect um, to uh, further strengthen the global supply chains, uh, which somehow was uh, paralyzed under the COVID. Uh, but, uh, well, surprisingly, it, it is still working. Uh, and then strengthening uh, those uh, global supply chains by, um, uh, by uh, trade agreements that uh, Japan has, been, uh, has concluded, uh, such as Trans-Pacific Partnership, as well as RCEP. RCEP was concluded uh, before, uh, during the pandemic, interestingly. Right. So uh, I think that both uh, the domestic and the international um, uh, business leaders expect the government uh, to um, resume the uh, people's mobility, uh, and then all, more in general, mobility of the people, goods, and uh, money.